What up, y'all? Welcome back to Instructions for Humanity. There are so many things to take care of, guys. I have been gone for a minute. Um, I was fasting. I was doing a sacral uh, chakra cleanse um, to cleanse out um, some of the DNA templates on my uh, maternal side of the family. And we got very, very beautiful healing. There's a lot of things that su surfaced um, about my mother. Um, going through some very traumatic situations, uh, being abused. And so um, those things were brought to the surface out of my own DNA sequence. And I was able to go ahead and not only heal her, but heal my entire uh, maternal line. Um, so then that way, um, the children that follow do not have to, you know, repeat and go through some of the things that, that we all may have had to experience guys so that is where i've been um healers need time to heal too guys healers need time to heal too it's funny because i just hopped on here i was literally just testing out the video i did not plan on like actually speaking to you guys and you know how some of my pictures of my um my ancestors next to me and two of their pictures just fell down. So um, I can tell that they are stepping forward um, for this message today. Guys, there's so much. So when I was on this fast, it was a 10 day water fast, but specifically to cleanse out the sacral. So um, I've been talking about this for a long time. I'm writing about this in my book. The divine showed me the new frequency that the chosen ones will live under. This will actually help us complete our incubation stage and move to the new earth where it's going to be in a, almost like a protected energy field. And yes, there is going to be a thousand years of peace. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let me pause this. I got so many prophecies, so many messages, one about Khloe Kardashian, Kardashian and her son that I do want to share with you guys. So this is kind of going to just be like uh, um, all the messages I received when I was on my, my fast slash slash cleanse. And um, then we might go into a teaching, but y'all stick around. It's going to be good. Hold on one second, please. Hey, guys. So sorry about that. So even healers need to get healed, guys. And even though my mother has passed away, this is how beautiful we are as souls. You still need healing. Even if you've passed away, there is an aspect of you that you leave behind here. All of the trauma. And this is what keeps you coming back to the matrix. So I am putting in the work so that I can heal my mother. She doesn't have to come back here. And you have the power to do that. So there's an aspect of us that we keep leaving behind. I'm going to do another video. There's five aspects of ourselves that must be healed. And we must actually take all of that with us when we pass away. If you leave anything behind, if you leave any stone unturned, if you have regrets, you will be back here. Absolutely. So let's jump into all of these messages I was getting when I was on this sacral chakra cleanse. Guys, the first one is about Khloe Kardashian. Now, guys, I usually get my messages in the wee hours in the morning, like four or five in the morning, and I just record them. So let's see if if we can uh, listen to this and then I'll break it down. And then I got another message about P. Diddy, Jay-Z. Beyonce about the whole hip hop industry, like it is crazy. So just stay tuned. Okay, so this is the message about Khloe Kardashian. For Khloe Kardashian, your son is very special. His name is, I'm not sure if his name is Tatum, but he's not to have that name. He's to have a name that means the one who walks in power. He is to have an Arabic name, meaning the one who walks in power. This name is going to start with an N. I don't know if it's Nazir or Nazi or um, Naeem or it's it's a name that means the one who walks in power. He's going to be your great protector. Uh, he came into this world to protect you and he's going to be powerful. He's going to be very, very manly, very, very uh, masculine. Uh, he's a great protector. He's going to walk in great power. Awesome, guys. So that's the first message I got about uh, Khloe Kardashian's son. And I think his name is Tatum. I think that's his name. But see, um, the divine is saying that is not to be his name. And at one point, she did do a name change. I think she changed the last name from Kardashian to Thompson. But really, um, she missed the mark. She was supposed to change his first name. So uh, the divine is saying that 
her son was born because her son is actually um, in the essence of the one who walks in power. So the one who walks in power is the divine, right? So um, her son is an aspect of the divine. He is going to be very masculine, very brave, a protector of Khloe Kardashian. So he was born to protect Khloe, but see, I'm getting that he was born to protect Khloe's heart because Khloe's a fellow Cancerian just like myself and our hearts are, some people say, too big. My mother was a Cancerian as well. And so when, when you have a big heart, you can, uh, a lot of people can take advantage of you. Um, so he, uh, that's the salvation for that, right? Um, her son Tatum, his name is to start with an N. It's supposed to be an Arabic name. I'm not sure what that is, but to the extent is it, it needs to mean the one who walks in power. Okay. And I think it's going to start with an N, um, but what, regardless, his name is supposed to be, supposed to mean the one who walks in power. So Chloe, um, you can look that up and, you know, get to change in that name because this child was sent here was a gift that was sent to help you. It's beautiful. He's your protector. You have a great soldier, warrior, protector that you are raising and he will not let any harm come to you and he's going to help you uh, protect your heart as well. And I think that's why you're getting more boundaries as well. Um, it's the energy that your son is bringing into you. Um, so that's what's going on there. And that is very, very, very beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> this message I got about freaking Jay-Z, Beyonce, the whole hip hop industry, like y'all is just crazy. I don't know if I should just do this in a separate video um, because, you know, people, you know, they can't sit and watch through the seven minutes of this. So I might pick that up in another video. Um, but I do want to say that we can absolutely fast to receive messages. This is, I wouldn't even be sitting here without fasting. It's been the, the, the best healing journey, the, the most powerful modality of death within thyself. This is when everything happened for me. It's when I died to myself. It's when I fasted. It's when I killed the body, right? Killed the man to emerge the spirit consciousness that dwells within my soul. So you can absolutely fast. If you're going through troubles of the heart, if you're going through financial issues, I don't care what you're going through. Fasting will help. I don't care if you got ailments that they said that you couldn't heal. You can heal everything with fasting. But see, the fasting only works with what? The power of our intentions, power of our imagination. They always say, and the Nikola Tesla said this, uh, the universe is comprised of energy, frequency, and vibration. But see, I take it one step further. There's more that the universe is comprised of. The universe is comprised of not only energy, frequency, and vibration, but imagination, mathematics, and acute awareness. When you add those other aspects in, you're taking into account our spirit consciousness, which has life, right? And it's ever expansive. So we can add that on to, to what the great Tesla said. It's not only comprised of energy, frequency, and vibration, but mathematics, the whole universe is a code. That's how, how you even became physical. It's all a code. Soon we will have the holographic phones where you call someone and the image of them appears. It is a code. That's how you appear in this 3D matrix. It's all a code. So mathematics, you cannot have this universal experience without, without mathematics. You cannot have it without the imagination. The imagination literally is source. The imagination is how all of the scenes roll out for you that triggers the code for the code to display that. But it first has to start with a vivid imagination 
You're the only one in here. Universe. Uni means one. You, every person here is in their own individual universe. And our imagination is how we roll out the scene. So if you want to be rich, you want to be, you know, I don't know, a star or whatever y'all want to do these days, activate the imagination. Activate the imagination. And then you need acute awareness, not just awareness, because you can just be aware. You need acute awareness. It's an awareness that is beyond the normal amount of awareness that people have. It is acute. It is accurate. You need to have that in order to gauge what you are feeling, what you are experiencing. You need acute awareness to make the code of everything um, be expressed in a way where you can understand it, right? So I just wanted to to throw that in here. And why I'm at it, I think I might go into this teaching because now the video is too short, then I want to leave the Diddy thing for another video. So, um, and this teaching was actually given to me by um, one of my celestial sisters, Kiki Kiahe. She don't like to be on camera, y'all. She don't like to be on camera, but we're working on that. We're working on that. But um, there's five aspects of yourself that you must not only heal, but you have to take all five aspects of the self back when you pass away. A lot of people think that they're just gonna praise God, whatever God you believe in, whatever deity you believe in. You're gonna just be one-sided in a world of duality, right? You, you decided to cut out the law of duality, which we live in, right, wrong, good, bad, up and down, right? Those, that's the law. But you say, no, screw the law. Screw the divine's law. I'm going to live on one side of the coin, right? I'm just going to study this religion into the day that I die. And then I'm going to hope that everything that the man taught me, the same man who oppressed you and killed your people and pillaged through villages and tribes and changed nationalities and stole your land and money, you're relying on that person to tell you the truth. That's what most people are doing, right? Relying on that person, same person that stole from them, to tell them the truth. And so they stay on one polarity forever. They just ignore, ignore the law of duality. They stay in that polarity. When they pass away, they're going to hope to see Jesus or Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna. They're going to hope to see him. You don't know if you're seeing the real one. Because you never explored what? The polarity, the duality of that. So in your mind, there's just one. Do you know that there are so many beings out here masquerading as God the Father, as Krishna, as Buddha, as Yahuda, Yeshua, master, masquerading as your passed away loved ones, pets even? So this is why you got to work on discernment. You cannot ignore the law of duality. You, you can't. So I say that to all say that we have duality within us. The, 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 the first thing that we really have is a balance between the masculine and feminine within. As I was born a woman, but there's also masculine within that needs to be healed, that needs to be expressed, Right. I cannot ignore that. And I tried to ignore that. And um, people used to tell me um, I was too feminine. Believe it or not, everybody wants a, a feminine woman. But guys, when you're not balanced, when you're only feminine and you become like a damsel in distress, and then that's not attractive, right? Because true feminine, femininity is powerful and it has a tinge of darkness to it. That is the attraction, no one wants someone that is a doormat and that is cannot do anything for themselves because they're too ultra feminine. No one likes that, right? Even in terms of if you want to make love, right, with your significant other. If you're just all feminine, you just lay in there. Don't nobody want nobody just laying there. They want they don't want a dead body, right? They want someone who will participate in the act of love making. And in order to participate and have that um kind of be able to take control, right? At certain points, 
you need to be in touch with your masculinity to even do that. So just on a basic level of just living life and being in relationships, right? With the opposite sex, you still need to honor the masculine within if you're feminine. And if you're a masculine and you're just all masculine, but if your woman or your wife, or your partner is crying and you can't empathize with her and you can't like soften yourself, you're going to be like barbaric. No one's going to want to be around that man because he has no balance of the femininity within, right? It is the same thing. So we cannot ignore these laws of duality. So this is what I'm getting at. These are the five aspects of yourself that must absolutely be healed. And as my um, my sister Kiahe says, they all need time on stage. Your divine feminine needs time on stage. Your divine masculine needs time on stage. Your inner child needs time on stage to explore, to play, right? A lot of people are just all work and no fun. They're suppressing the, the, the inner child, right? Which must be healed. And you must take the inner child with you. And everything has to come back and fall back onto itself to merge back into the total being, right? That is the only way you get out of this matrix. Is there any part of you that is not healed? You will be back. You can't have jagged pieces. We've been told that, no, Jesus is going to heal everything. Yeah, Jesus will heal everything heal everything by putting you back here in the game so that you can participate in your own healing. You cannot outsource this to anyone. This is your soul's work. That's why you are here. Otherwise, why do you have a soul, right? So our, our deities and the gods that we pray to and we believe in, they can absolutely help us, but they won't do the work for you. If you're expecting just to say hallelujah on Sunday and go eat some chicken legs after church and then go to the pearly gates, I'm sorry, you are mistaken. It takes work. It takes work. So the other aspects of yourself, it's going to be your shadow. I also try to ignore the shadow. I try to just live in love and light. It's not possible. A shadow is for your own protection. A shadow is basically nothing more than healthy boundaries. When your shadow self is balanced within the totality of the God body within with these five aspects, then it's basically shows up as healthy boundaries. It's saying, hey, I'm going to put a wall where I no longer feel comfortable and safe with someone crossing that. My shadow's going to come out. If you try to cross that, you will get met with the shadow. Okay. And it won't not be love and light. So I live my whole life without a shadow. And I was definitely taken advantage of each and every time because the shadow helps you put up boundaries, right? And so the shadow must be healed and you must take the shadow with you. The shadow must merge and collapse onto the totality of the God body, source body, right? And then the last one is going to be your over soul, your higher consciousness. That's why I love talking about the spirit consciousness, right? That is like our over soul. That's the aspect of us that is ever expansive, the aspect of us that is a direct line to the expansion of source. It is that um, kind of like if you were to purify water, we have water, right? But there's other elements inside of it especially if it's like spring water, it's been hitting bedrocks and it might have like different particles and you have to filter out certain things. That is what our spirit consciousness is. Our spirit consciousness is the filtration of all of the other things that, that are unlearned, I guess. What I'm trying to say is that it takes the consciousness, the spirit consciousness, and it almost funnels it when I'm seeing my mind's eye and it's diagonal. It's, it's, it's like at a, um, it's an angle and it goes up to source, but it goes up cleansed and, and purified. It doesn't take the dirt with it. So what it means is it learns the lesson. So the spirit consciousness is the aspect that has the direct line to source that has already been purified. So it's an aspect of you where you're going through something who are what that already knows the salvation or the the answer right there's an aspect that is the part that goes up to source 
It's the healed aspect. It's the part that has been shifted through, right? Separating spirits from spirit, soul from soul, flesh from flesh, right? It is that, that double-edged sword, right? That can, is so accurate. It's so precise when, when, when it comes through to cut and it cuts with truth. You have to have truth in order to have, uh, you know, your oversoul to be balanced. You have to have truth. There's no way around it. You can't just depend on someone to tell you, this is true. This is fact. Yep, it's in a book. Even it's the same people who got you up in this mess that then, that then printed those books, right? And you have no way of fact checking. That's why you have to have great discernment. You have to have the imagination and the acute awareness really you have to have the acute awareness right if you want to decipher all of these things so these are the five aspects of yourself that all need time on stage and so i'm working on my divine masculine bringing that out and the divine masculine for me has shown up this year and um i'm really proud of the masculine within myself i'm very very proud um, because I didn't know I had it in me. I didn't know I had the strength in me, but I'm more powerful and you're more powerful than what you ever could imagine. And having that divine masculine come out to protect when no one is around to protect you, to provide for you, to give you strength, to kind of keep going, even when you don't know if you can keep going. So Divine Masculine absolutely showed up for me. Um, I'm still working on the shadow. <laughs> I still don't like the shadow. I still love love. I am love and light. Um, there is an aspect of me that is a bit passive aggressive. So I may take things for a certain time and then one day you say something to me and I'll just flip out. Um, but when you have a healthy shadow, see, you don't have to be passive aggressive, right? Um, so I'm working on bringing the shadow aspect of myself out. I know I get on this channel and I kind of preach to you guys and I can be in a character and I can seem very bold, but I am a true Cancerian, right? We can, we have a hard time saying no. We have a hard time disappointing people. Um, we have a hard time not being yes men and yes women. And so I've been working on that, but, um, working with my shadow a little more. I hope to, uh, pursue that relationship with my shadow more. Um, in the years to come um, so I can have those very strong boundaries and spiritual boundaries are very important you know I've worked with my oversoul my, my higher self is what people call it um, my oversoul my higher consciousness my spirit consciousness right and so that aspect was always good the feminine aspect was always good right the inner child I live in the inner child right um, I had to bring my inner child back a little bit um, especially this year, right? But hopefully the inner child will be able to play a bit more, guys. Um, but I am going to pause this and then just wrap it up, okay? One moment. So yes, guys, so um, sorry about that. So absolutely, I'll be working on my shadow more. Um, all of these aspects of us, guys, we are multidimensional beings. This is the five components of us. That all need time in the sun. They all need time to shine. They all need time on stage. They all are important to making you a well-rounded individual and soul. You're not going to be able to work, 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 be in the masculine and leave the feminine behind. You'll be back in another incarnation to learn the feminine. Adversely, you will not be allowed to just sit, lie around and be a woman of leisure and be too feminine where you can't use your hands and your feet, right? You can still be a woman of leisure, but you're, you're not going to be able to not be able to, to not have some sort of sense of masculinity inside of you to reach balance, or you'll be back to experience the masculine. And it doesn't mean you're going to figure that one out in one lifetime. It take you thousands to, to work on the divine masculine, right? So it's better to Go ahead and go inside and start to work with the different aspects of you. Understand who needs to be on stage, right? If you're talking to someone who is in their shadow self, right? You're probably not going to bring, you know, out a certain, like, 
I don't know, the the uber uh, feminine or the oversoul, I would say you're not going to bring that oversoul higher self out because that's just going to piss them off. That's what they really need, though, but that will piss them off, right? Um, so, you know, you have to understand who you're talking to and you can bring out certain aspects of yourself because we're all multi-dimensional. Just adversely as you cannot just be a child forever. You cannot just be in the playground forever. You cannot just stay on one level of consciousness, right? Eventually the child must eat, learn how to eat the meat off the bones. You know, can't have milk forever, right? This is what's going on in your various different relig religions and school, the school system, all the books and stuff they hand to you. That's milk. They've ex extracted the, the meat and potatoes out of it. They've given you your milk. You are to start eating adult food now, right? So you need to get to uh, the other side, the other polarity, so that you can work with the law of duality right this earth life is dualistic in nature so you have to know the good the bad the ugly the right and the wrong the up and the down and all of that so we heal ourselves the divine masculine within the feminine within pamper her love on her the other day i woke up and when i was on my 10 day um sacral chakra fast and i woke up and i was just singing love songs to myself. I was dancing at five in the morning, slow dancing with myself, with the divine feminine within. She was getting healed. The sacral space was getting healed. And I just felt so good. And it felt good to be with her. And it was pure. And it was love. And it was light, you know, not light, like the light you shine, but it was light. It wasn't heavy at all. It was beautiful to be in that energy, right? A lot of people nowadays, they never get to be in their feminine energy. They never do. And, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like the divine masculine, right? The divine masculine gets stuff done, right? So I'm starting to like that aspect of me and understanding what the divine masculine needs. The divine masculine doesn't need a prissy, um, feminine that's needy and wants her nails and hair done all the time when when the divine masculine is trying to get things done and accomplish it needs a soldier it needs someone to say okay i'm going to take a back seat for a moment for the greater good of uh, our collective body right and the shadow shadow is there the shadow is raw you have to tame the shadow right by by working on the other aspects of you you have to tame the shadow, right? Every aspect of you needs boundaries, right? And the shadow helps us protect ourselves from even ourselves, not just other people, but even ourselves, right? When it's tamed and when it's balanced, right? And then, of course, we have the inner child and the oversoul as well. So you have to, you can't just be religious all the time. You got to get to the spirit. If you never get to the spirit, you will be back. You be having an incarnation like me where it's all about the spirit, where I'm working with the spirit and I'm working with spirits, right? Because I, I came into this earth life very afraid of all of this, so afraid. And there's an aspect of me that had to have this in order to heal everything within all the five aspects of myself so I can take that back and transcend this law of duality and this aspect part of the universe so I can move on into higher aspects of consciousness right okay so i'm gonna leave this video right here guys but it feels good to be back it feels good to be cleansed it feels it feels good to be really whole and i'm excited for the next year well which really doesn't start until march but anywho i'm excited for the year that we've all agreed on i've got um another video about the 2000 and 2000 2024 predictions video but still do that video about diddy y'all could he be a power bottom not him but jay-z i think jay-z might be a power bottom we're gonna talk about what i saw and beyonce and the queen bee and the honeycomb and all of this but guys i gotta go i gotta go but i love you the birds the bees yes all of the beautiful trees love you too love is the way forgiveness it's the key and truth is the light that will always always guide us home be well be well, guys. Bye.